Hey, what's going on guys? First day recap for NVIDIA after the stock split. It is up 76 cents or roughly 0.63% on its first day after the 10 to 1 stock split. Uh, so it was a pretty, pretty, uh, pretty choppy day for the most part. Um, you know, sold off pretty good this morning. And then, you know, right around 10 o'clock, it, uh, it bottomed out and then it kind of, kind of rallied back up. Peak of today was right around 123, so that was a that was a pretty big day for Nvidia, um, up almost two percent, 1.74 percent. Um, so yeah, you know, needless to say, a uh, pretty good first day for Nvidia after the stock split. Um, it'll be interesting to see if uh, you know things continue. Um, you know, the past week it's up 8.52 percent, past month up 35 percent, three months 40 percent. And then year to date is the up the whopping 146, 146 percent. So you know, needless to say, Nvidia has been a leader of this market, you know, for you know the last several years. But uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Um, historically, Nvidia normally um, pulls back after stock splits, but um, it'll be it'll be interesting to see. You know, just kind of how things shake out. But uh, but yeah, that's a quick little recap on Nvidia today. Um, I also wanted to talk about yield maxes NVDY. So if you're not familiar with what this fund is, it purchases NVIDIA, you know, via synthetic covered calls. So it seeks to provide current income and capped gains on NVIDIA stock through a synthetic covered call strategy collateralized by cash and U.S. Treasuries. The actively managed fund uses both standardized exchanges, standard exchange traded, and flex options. Um, so yeah, very popular. Yield Max it is a fund management company that has several of uh, of these types of derivative income based funds out in the market. Tesla is another big one, and then Y Max is actually one of the newer ones. It's a collection of multiple, um, you know, several of their funds. Uh, but high level, you know, they're holding treasury notes, but they're also purchasing and selling, you know, NVIDIA calls. And they also have a put. So I imagine they probably sold the put and then used that premium to, you know, purchase a synthetic covered call. So needless to say, the yield on this fund is incredible, right? So the last 30 days, it's a 4.71 percent dividend yield it's paying out like two dollars and some change per month so it is a very high yielding etf needless to say but with that you know there can and most likely will be some nav erosion um, as you can see in this chart it looks like it's up 29 percent year to date up 27 percent in the past year and up 45 percent in the past five years but you know, needless to say, obviously, if you would have invested in NVIDIA itself, you would be up, you know, a lot more. However, you are getting, you know, the covered call premium per month in the, in, the, in the form of a dividend. You know, with all that being said, I am starting a new strategy and it is swing trading into this fund. So as you can see, there are some decent swings, at, le at least today. You know, it bottomed at 28.40 and then peaked at, um, there's almost a dollar whiff here. And what I am planning to do is build out a long term position in NVDY, but I want to do it in a very strategic, um, strategic way, right? So my plan is to, you know, purchase, continually buy and sell shares um, and hopefully make a spread, um, you know by doing that. Um, I did a little bit of it today, only um, only a little bit of capital was used, uh, but pretty much the whole idea is, um, you know, every single day or, you know, as much as I can, I'm gonna try to day trade this ETF and, uh, you know, obviously profit on each of these trades, but continually do this. Um, that way I can, you know, get exposure to this high yielding ETF, uh, but, you know, obviously don't want to, enter a position by just buying and holding uh, just because I, I am, uh, you know, 
under the impression that there is going to be some nav erosion with this ETF. So I just kind of want to strategically, um, you know, slowly build a position into this ETF. So I'm going to show a spreadsheet um, of kind of what I'm doing so far um, and kind of walk through it. Um, I think I made, I think I might've purchased like 17, 17 shares today. And then I ended up selling it for, I don't know, I made like eight cents per share. So it was nothing crazy. Uh, but let me just dive into the spreadsheet and kind of show you what I'm planning to do here. So, you know, I was left with 0.2 shares, so not a whole lot of capital, right? Um, however, you know, at, at one point I had like, like I said, 17 or 18 shares, but I slowly trimmed and tried to take out as much, um, much of my original investment as possible. Um, so the current price is 2926, current value 585. I'm down on my original purchase, down a cent. Um, so the annual dividends, this is something I'm gonna be calculating. Um, so this is a, a, an estimate, obviously their, their dividends vary a significant amount. Um, and then this calculation is estimating $2.30. Um, but you know, I'm under the impression that this is also gonna drop as well. Let me just pull up nvdy dividend history see if i can pull that over to the screen so you guys can see what i'm kind of displaying here let's see okay perfect this is bigger okay so yeah so this is nvdy it's projected 106 dividend yield but this is going to come down um i think they're shooting for more of like a 50 percent dividend yield if i understand this uh, correctly, uh, but roughly, you know, a dollar fifty three, two sixty two, two sixty, two fifty. Uh, so I just estimated two dollars and thirty cents per share uh, per month. So um, we'll see. Uh, we'll see how consistent that is. And um, yeah. So coming back to this, so that calculation is two dollars and thirty cents times twelve is an annual amount times our point two shares. So uh, you know, so that's going to be that. Our yield on cost, this calculation looks a little off. I'm gonna have to you know, double check this, uh, but pretty much um, we'll see We'll see how that goes. Um, and then you know, as I get dividends, I'm gonna hope to, um, you know, obviously I'll update this, um, but I, like I mentioned, I think I swing traded like 17 shares. Um, the problem with you know, some of these ETFs is that they're not, not real, real liquid. Um, but I think it was like 17 shares times 0.0, oops, 17 shares times 0.08. So I might not have made that. Maybe like, regardless, I made like 36 cents. So nothing crazy, uh, but I do plan to use more capital, um, going forward. So, you know, hopefully in these swings and in these, in these moves in the market, I can scalp some of this, uh, scalp some of the stock movement and then just profit that. So with all that being said, um, so I trimmed the majority of my position. I'm only holding $5 right now of it, but that $5, I'm up 6%. Um, I'm up, up 6%, hoping to continually get this to zero. Um, that's my goal, get this to zero, you know, via the combination. I'm definitely probably not gonna sell options on it just because it might not even be available, but. It's going to be mainly from dividends, collecting the premium and the swing trading. So I'm going to continually get in and out of this position uh, with the plans of hopefully getting uh, our cost basis down to zero as fast as possible and then just kind of going from there. Um, so yeah, currently we're up 6% on the position. We just started this position today. Our cost basis is 2750 uh, So yeah, that's going to be kind of the extent of this video. It'll be interesting to see. I may, you know, I may just try to swing trade NVIDIA and then throw, you know, split the profits of that into NVDY and NVIDIA itself uh, because the problem only, like there's a concerning factor that, you know, I have a little bit here is the trading volume. Average volume is 1.3 million. Um, the volume today was 1.42 million. So, you know, we may have an issue compared to the average volume. That's incredible. Is that really, 
That seems very high. I don't know if that has been updated since the stock split. Um, but uh, that would be incredible. Let's look at what Apple is. Actually, let's hold off on that for now. But um, yeah, 518 million. That seems a little high. Um, I'll, I'll keep an eye on that the next couple of days and see if that's just over fluctuated because of the stock split or, or, or what exactly. But that seems a little high. I was not expecting it to be that much. But needless to, needless to say, um, the important thing with this, I'm not going to be able to do it on Robinhood. Technically, you can, uh, but uh, the strategy that I'm using, you have to make sure you're doing um, LIFO, so last in, first out. And Robinhood defaults to using FIFO. So pretty much meaning if you buy, buy one stock, for 29 26 let me add a couple rows here just to kind of illustrate what i'm talking about and you buy another one for 29 24 and um you're hoping to keep this long term but you just kind of want to scalp this one so if you come and try to do a sell 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 one stock if you don't specify this is the one that you're going to pretty much want to sell, it's going to automatically close out the first, you know, first in, first out method. So it's going to close out the first one and then simultaneously close out additional shares after that. But if you use LIFO, you can specify like, hey, like this is the one I want to close out for $29.25 or, or whatever. Um, However, you know, you want to block these together, um, if that makes sense. So Robinhood, I, you can't do it within their platform, but I, from my understanding, you can contact them and, you know, specifically tell them like, hey, this trade, I want to use LIFO, but it's a little bit more complicated. So I'm going to use Fidelity for this strategy. Um, so just, it'll be a little bit easier to kind of manage manage those tax lots lots there but uh but yeah guys stick around um i'm gonna try to slowly like i mentioned build out this position get it to zero and then just continually um continually grow it i'm also doing this with just some of my long-term holdings as well so like nvidia um several growth and dividend growth stocks i'm just kind of continually uh you know trying to take advantage of some of this volatility in the market and uh you know ultimately lower lower my cost basis and lower my risk um it'll be interesting to see you know it may not be the best uh best idea long term right you know being able to time the market consistently over and over and over and over again is, is a very challenging thing and um you know it may just be better um my time might just be better spent you know buying um buying and holding or uh you know something along the lines of that so we'll see um it would be cool to kind of algorithmically you know create some type of bot that you know does this for me but uh we'll see we'll see how things go um we'll see you know how consistent i can uh can be with this and then kind of go from there but uh yeah another way of doing this as well is you know obviously selling selling options that can be a way to theoretically uh lower your cost basis over over the long term so that's another thing that i like to like to do as well but uh but yeah guys so that's it for today's video just kind of wanted to briefly talk about nvidia and the first day of it trading after the stock split and then nvdy um yield max is nvidia option income strategy etf